you were at Lake Rant where I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. You can get one of these by being one of those. This one's for best wishes to you who says, Rant about your video where you talked about the 10 best things in anime this decade. Since we are nearing the end of the decade, I'd like to hear your thoughts on if anime lived up to your expectations. If what you said in that video still holds true and what you think the future of anime will have in store. Well, I've got the text version of that opened up right now. It was written back in 2016, May 30th, so over three years ago. Uh, let's see, how, how have things changed in the last few years? Uh, my number 10 had been Twitter. Twitter has continued to be extremely important to anime discourse, very important to keeping us in, uh, in the West in touch with our Japanese uh, counterparts slash overlords. Um, you know, I do wish there was more uh, being, I, I guess if, if I had to say what I wish the next step would be, it would be even better communication between the Japanese and American fans, of which I think there is very little, even when Japanese creators sometimes interact with Western fans. Um... You know, I mean, obviously there's a huge language barrier there, but uh, we can find ways to overcome. Uh, number nine, serialized films and web shorts. These have only continued to grow in prominence and popularity, uh, particularly with Netflix picking up more and more stuff. Um, you know, the whole serialized film style has continued to grow. I'm a, I like it. I think they're going in good ways. Number eight, I had the Monogatari and Mobile Suit Gundam release schedules. Those are still consistent as far as I know. Mobile Suit Gundam is launching into another film project, I think, soon. Um, so, yeah, those those release schedules did well throughout the decade and hopefully uh, will be imitated in the coming one. Digital effects work on TV shows. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say this has necessarily improved since 2016. I don't... Uh, I don't know, maybe like Violet Evergarden or something, even though I don't ultimately don't like the way the processing in that show looks because they went too far with it. But, uh, yeah, I feel like digital effects work has been in a pretty comfortable place the last few years. Um, awesome remakes. I mean, this was this was uh, two whole years almost before Devilman Crybaby, which was a pretty awesome remake. Um I mean, that's, I don't know if that's exactly what I was talking about. I was more referring to, uh, to like, re-releasing a show like FMA Brotherhood or, uh, or Hunter Hunter 2011. I'm trying to think if there was another good example of that. I mean, we had some shows that came. We had, like, Ushio and Tora and stuff. Um, actually, I mentioned that in here because it was, I guess, uh, happening at the time. Um... Yeah, I don't know if there's been another super high-profile one of these the way that there was with those ones, but I mean, whatever. Uh, number five, Anime Studio Diaspora. I don't even know if this is actually maintained being a positive thing because it's it's gotten crazier. Like, Anime Studios splintering off from one another and forming new studios. Um, it's gotten to a point where, like, we were doing the seasonal impressions chart for this season and a significant number of studios I did not recognize the names of uh, were brand new and a lot of those new studios have to take on really small work, you know? So it's like, even though more shows are getting produced, they are of lower overall quality, by and large. But, uh, you know, I don't know. This remains to be seen if this will be a good or a bad thing in the long run, I guess. Uh, the Japan Animator Expo. That happened. It's already over, but it was good, for sure. The Young Animator Training Project, I think, is still going on. Um, I haven't heard of any of them being, like, super super amazing or uh, noteworthy the way that like some of the stuff from earlier in the decade was celebrated, but um, I don't know. Anime crowdfunding. This did not go as well as I would have liked for the rest of the decade. You know, at the time we had the Little Witch Academia and Kick Heart things. Um, we had Under the Dog, which turned out to be shit. And I think that put a damper on a lot of it. There have been several huge... Um, failures like there's been a bunch of kickstarters that did not get their did not meet their goal even though they had really ambitious staff really talented people behind them but like the ideas just weren't marketable enough they didn't connect with enough people and it really goes to show that like you have to really hard sell people on something if they're going to put their money behind it unless it's like a property they already care about which you know is the hard sell in and of itself so uh yeah, I don't know. Crowdfunding hasn't gone as well for anime as, as I would have hoped. Uh, Trigger did open a Patreon. I don't know what they've really been doing with it, 
per se. I mean, I pledge to it, but, uh, you know, I don't pay much attention to it. Um, and finally, there's online streaming. I mean, streaming obviously is the way things be now. It is by far the biggest way people watch anime. I think it's really done a good job of helping the, the biggest anime to get even bigger and the smallest anime to have a fighting chance. And, uh, you know, that's what streaming has offered us, which I think is good. So, yeah. Uh, overall, most of the stuff I thought was good about this decade has continued to be good. I wish crowdfunding had gone a little bit better over the last few years. But, uh, but overall... You know, it was an interesting decade for anime, for sure. Tons of great shit came out. Definitely at least, you know, I, I don't think there's any decade that's, like, leaps and bounds superior than any of the others in anime history, but, you know, it's up there with all of them.